Welcome everybody. Hope everybody had a lovely lunch and uh, we're ready to go again with distributed leadership. First of all, my name, as you rightly said, is Ruth Burke and I'm head teacher at Jess Jumeirah in Jumeirah. Um, my interest in distributed leadership stems really from two aspects. One has been uh, very much linked to recent study. I, I'm studying for a master's and my dissertation is on the subject of distributed leadership. And I'm sure you'll agree with and our keynote speaker this morning did a fantastic job in inspiring us and her journey um, to the North Pole was something something extraordinary. For me, taking on the master's degree with a full-time job and a family was a bit like her journey to the North Pole in my context. It was, you know, full on and a real challenge. So that um, knowledge I have acquired through studying for a dissertation, working on a dissertation on distributive leadership has made me very, very interested in the subject indeed. And secondly, I am the product, I suppose, of a culture of distributive leadership. Because at Jess, um, at all aspects, people, in all, in all respects, people are very much encouraged to take risks, to take on challenges. Mr. Stoko, our director, described it at lunch as pushing people out of their comfort zone. Very, very often people are quite happy to jump out of their comfort zone if they're in that culture of it's okay to make mistakes, it's okay to have a go, there's people here who can help, there's lots of experts around, and we're all in this together. So that culture, and um, that very much permeates everything we are at Jess, of sharing leadership, of getting people involved in decision making, giving people a voice, has very much um, enabled me to be in the position I'm in at Jess today. So, you know, as joining 12 years ago as a class teacher, and working my way through various roles, and, and, and today being head teacher, it is very much down to the culture that has been developed within the school setting. And of course, it is, it is a part of my role to ensure that that culture of distributed leadership not only is maintained, but it's further developed. And that is what we're, we're about at Jess. And today, I hope to share with you some of the key elements of the journey we're on. We're in no way there at the end of that journey, and probably, as you all know as educators, we never will get to the end of that journey. There is always more that we have to do. Um, and this afternoon, I'm just going to sort of signpost where we are at Jess Jumeirah. I'm not saying this is the way to do it by any means, but it's the way we're doing it. And certainly we're having a lot of success and a lot of fun along the way with the distributed leadership. So this afternoon, I'll share with you some research and findings, what it looks like in practice, you know, on the ground in our school, and some of the initiatives that have really become successful because we have distributed leadership. So what is distributed leadership? A little bit of theory, first of all, and not too much of the theory, but plenty of books here if anybody wants to browse for more theory and later on after the session. So in terms of what is distributed leadership, there's a huge amount written on the subject and various authors and various researchers have um, come up with various names for what is distributed leadership. And uh, in some books it's co-leadership, it can be shared leadership, it can be teacher leadership. <coughs> but whatever you choose to call it, what distributed leadership is, is mobilizing leadership at every level. And that has been a very exciting journey for us to be part of. And uh, uh, later in the presentation, I'll talk about how, you know, at, at teacher level and at pupil level, we are mobilising leadership. Spallan um, is one of the key writers on the subject, and his book is, his books are definitely worth a, a, a good look at if you're on this journey, as we are of distributed leadership. And he describes it as engaging the many so that there is a greater skill set energy potential, shared responsibility, and will to improve. And I suppose that will to improve is why we're all here, sitting in this room this afternoon. Welcome, come on through. Hello there. So that will to improve is why we're in the business of education. And it's so important that we're harnessing that will in every one of our members of staff, and indeed, in every one of our learners. How important is this co-leadership. How important is it to spread the leadership over many? It's hugely important. And, and, it, and the two major reasons for, for doing this are number one, school improvement. Um, Leithwood and Al, and anybody who's interested in a copy of, of his findings, Seven Strong Claims About Successful School Leadership, the Bible really. And um, in terms of moving forward on school leadership, if leadership is well embedded with an excellent leadership within the school, 
there will be a significant impact on student learning. What Lee Kut also asserts and proves is that if the leadership is distributed, there is an even bigger impact on student learning. And, key to this, the wider the level of distribution, the more impact on student learning. So it's absolutely key that we all nail distributed leadership in our drive and in our journey to improving student outcomes. <clears throat> School leadership has a greater influence on schools and students when it is widely distributed. Now the key elements, the key elements of distributed leadership um, are plenty, there's lots of them. I'm going to go through a few of them this afternoon and if there's any questions at the end, I should have said that, if there's any questions at the end, please feel free to, to ask. So for me, a clear vision is number one. Obviously, you cannot run an organisation where everybody is going off on different uh, routes, uh, with different levels of passion, in different areas of expertise. That would be anarchy. We'll, we, we've, we've got to agree on that. But with a shared vision that everybody is feeding into and everybody is contributing to, we can together as an organisation define what our key priorities are and build a plan around that. And with any good plan, that plan can be changed <coughs> through a collegiate approach, through lots of people involved in the, the decision making, etc. But there must be a plan and it must stem from a very clear vision so that everybody is in and on this journey together. Positive relations too are hugely important uh, if distributed leadership is going to work properly. There's got to be a culture whereby people can have open and frank discussions with each other. There's got to be a culture of respect. There's got to be a culture that is very much based on we are all focused on students, we are all focused on student learning. So positive relationships whereby frank discussion, open dialogue, focused dialogue on learning taking place is important. And obviously underpinning that, those relationships, is that feeling of collaboration, <coughs> working together, time being made for people to work together. Um, it's very important for teams to be empowered, to be given um, you know, scope to develop ideas, but also to be given time. Um, and, and another key aspect is emphasis on your people, the people in your organisation rather than the systems. And any of you who know me well know that I'm quite a systems driven person and I think systems are very important for a school to function well. However, um, when, when the systems are not empowering the people, then you've got to go back to the drawing board and you've got to say, right, there's systems here that need tweaking, there's ways we can do this better. Let's listen to our people, let's see what, what are their ideas on various issues and let's see if we can make things even better. That will to improve that Spillane talks about is key. Now, Little, 1999, so not recent research, however, important research. Consider, and think about your own staff rooms, consider how much smarter a school could become if it was able to identify and share the collective experience and learning of all its teachers. Think to your own staff room, how many experts in how many different areas um, of, of school life, of learning, of teaching there are within your staff rooms. And if each of those persons could be given the opportunity to share their passion, expertise and drive in that particular area, imagine a school where that would happen. For us at Gestumera, these are some of the things over the last 18 months to two years that we've been working on. They're massive, massive areas. No one is an expert at everything. But these are areas that we've driven forward over the last 18, to two year, 18 months to two years because we have identified some experts, we have given them scope to move areas of development forward, including assessment, assessment and tracking, particularly in the non-core subjects is our drive at the moment. So we've got music, PE, ICT, um, tracking, uh, tracking children's progress, so what? so that we can make sure every child is gaining, is improving, no child left behind. And planning, particularly in the foundation stage, has taken a massive, um, has had a massive overhaul recently, um, and for the betterment, I'm sure Mrs. Parr is sitting here beside me, um, head of, deputy head for the key stage 
one and foundation stage, the planning has really been pushed forward and is having that change is having such a massive impact for the children in the foundation stage classrooms. SSE is something that Chester Mayor we're all the time working on tweaking and developing. We've recently introduced a snapshot assessment which was discussed in one of the sessions earlier today to help inform our quality assurance, our performance management and our school self-evaluation. Inquiry-based learning has been pushed on um, quite significantly also and all topics have got that inquiry-based um, approach to them now, um, right from foundation one stage. So uh, enterprise equally, lots of things going on to develop pupils' understanding of enterprise and giving pupils opportunities to develop their entrepreneurial skills. Uh, mobile technology has moved forward significantly um, with the usage of iPads, mini iPads, uh, Blackberries, all sorts of gadgets going on to enhance learning. Um, for learning. And lastly, metacognition in terms of working on helping children to understand how they learn. So children are reflecting upon their own learning. So as you can see from that huge amount of, of big, big areas there, these are issues for our school that are being moved forward, not by senior management team alone, but by senior managers alongside experts in these areas, people who are passionate about mobile technology. They're, work, they're running working parties, they're doing um, tech meetings, they're getting children on board to help with this. So in all sorts of ways, some of these initiatives, very, very high energy. Others happening in particular areas of the school, but all things moving forward due to the fact that it's allowing these things to happen. But in practice, what are we actually doing um, to allow and to enable? Um, teachers sharing best practice through dropping into college lessons, to systems of appreciative inquiry which are well embedded. Jackie this morning in her session talked about appreciative inquiry, about getting into um, units, getting into classrooms and looking for good practice. And then finding ways, systematic ways, to share and cascade that practice through. We're doing a lot of peer observations as part of performance management, a lot of dialogue centred on learning, team teaching um, as a key tool in staff development, um, giving people voice, a voice so involvement in decision making which is, is a key feature of distributed leadership and that can be through a variety of ways, working parties, subcommittees etc. Uh, learning walks and learning talks integral to the school evaluation systems. So these are some of the ways that you see distributed leadership working at ground level. I mentioned at the beginning of the presentation that I'd been working on, on a dissertation. Part of that, of course, was to take on a research study. Um, I'm going to share with you some of the findings from, from the school, of my school in Gestumera, and um, just to signpost where we are. We're, as I said at the beginning, we're not all the way there yet with distributed leadership. We may never be, but we're on a journey, and hopefully, um, some of the things that I've probed through the research may help to signpost where, where you could go next with it at your own school. So um, the research itself is a year old. Um, it's probing the understanding of distributed leadership from the staff and then comparing what they understand distributed leadership to be with the actual practice within the school. So where are we now? Um, probe questions, the research probe questions like what's the link between student learning and teacher collaboration, the importance of staff sharing ideas about learning and teaching, the importance of planning and reviewing with colleagues, so that collaboration coming through, the importance of sharing um, PD within the teams. So, all teachers, leaders in their own classrooms, key to distributed leadership. Um, in terms of where the staff felt we were, we're well on our way, as you can see from, from the pie chart. And um, with, with the questionnaires, there was opportunities for teachers to comment on the various um, elements of distributed leadership. This one, everyone is as a leader in a unique way. It takes responsibility for different areas. Everyone's opinion is valued. Another area of questions that were, 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 were around the subject of teachers should be given opportunities to exercise leadership beyond their own classroom. Because we all know if a culture of distributed leadership is to be developed, we need people on board who, who aren't just there to go into their classroom and close the door, thank you very much, I'm going to teach, the, teach my class. No, we need people on board who are 
willing to share, willing to get involved, willing to go the extra mile. So um, in probing this one, we also found positively that, again, people really agreed with getting involved in leadership, not just going into their classroom <coughs> to teach their children. There's more to being a teacher now. Everyone gets the opportunity, it was said, to grow and to be part of the decisions that are made at school. All teachers are valued. Different staff have different areas of expertise, so it makes a huge difference when, to us when they share it. It certainly does make a huge difference. I mean, even this afternoon, um, I'm taking a risk using keynotes, first time to present using an iPad mini and the iPad behind me. I can only do this because I've got a, a fantastic expert in the use of Apple equipment who sort of take me by the hand, step by step, through the process. So it does make a tremendous difference, doesn't it, when people share their passion and really get behind you and say, yeah, you can do this. We also looked at teachers having direct influence. What is the influence of, of teachers on student learning? How, how does it compare with the influence of the principal on student learning? It's important to remember, however, that as head teachers, our influence on student learning is huge. Um, but only secondly to excellent teaching in classrooms. So again, scores on the door show that where we are, or where we were last year, and hopefully further ahead even still, um, very positive within the climate, within the culture of Jess Jumeirah. People are very much on board and, and, and understand the need for, you know, being hugely involved in learning, being hugely involved in leadership beyond their own classrooms. The comment, one of the comments was, our role impacts learning in every way, planning, assessment, assessment analysis, to communicating with team members, to parents and to children about their learning journey. Mm -hmm. Now, last night when I was practicing the presentation, as we do, um, in front of my 19-year-old daughter, and there's a funny thing about um, grown-up daughters is they do give it to you straight, don't they? Even when you don't actually want, um, want them to. Her comment on this part of the presentation was, it's a bit like sitting through a party political broadcast. So apologies in advance. I am flying the flag for gesture Mary and everybody's saying it's all, all fantastic. Um, and, and it is, and we're very proud of it. And I think that pride um, that teachers feel for their school does come out in this video, so do bear with me. She hopes. in the house. Oh, is anyone putting their hand up, Mrs. Parr? I'm just turn it back on again. Have listened to that. Was that no, no, you won't listen to that. Let's have a look. That's all again. So, in the party political broadcast, oh. <laughs> delighted. Basically everybody on the video was saying they've got opportunities to distribute leadership in many, many ways. The librarian talked about how she's given scope to develop um, new schemes within the library. So um, augmented reading systems. Our foundation stage coordinator talked about how she had the opportunity to really rethink the planning and the topics and the approach to parents as partners. Our year six coordinator talked about how he was enriching the curriculum by adding in uh, food technology projects, etc., etc. So, how about the connection? Ah, it's fallen out of the walls. Oh, the technology is letting me down. Thank you, Mrs. Parr. We've got a bit of a connection issue going on over there. on the little um, uh, video we're talking about how distributive leadership was working for them um, and an 
I'm hoping that this is going to work for me shortly. There's a connection. I'm just going to present from here now. So, in terms of the conclusion of the research study, we found a gesture mirror. We had a positive stance on distributed leadership. Um, there was a real understanding for the need for collegiality to permeate. And teachers were having a major voice. Teachers having a major voice was of importance if distributed leadership was going to work within the organisation. The most exciting part of distributed leadership for us at Gestionaire, however, has been engaging students and developing student voice within the organisation. And this is something quite new um, in terms of where we are along the spectrum of how far can we take pupil voice and engaging pupils. We have student council, we have tech leaders, we have eco-warriors, we have art leaders, line leaders and monitors, such as expect charity committee, heritage heroes, and lots of other groups of children involved in leadership within the school. That is having a massive impact in all sorts of ways. So say, for example, our work on mobile technology. We have children who have been involved in providing professional development in terms of after-school insights. <coughs> And we've had children involved in the DSIB training on mobile technology. Maybe some of you have attended that with Steve Bambury and Amy Burris. <coughs> um, we have oh, there's a phone going off now. And we've even had children um, co coaching members of staff in terms of mobile technology. I have a little chap who comes to visit me every week. He's from year four. He gives me work to do um, in terms of developing and working on, on the apps um, and homework on a weekly basis. And he comes in on a Sunday and expects me to have it done and to have my questions ready for him. That's highly empowering for him, and it is paying dividends for me as well. And um, in terms of how the children are feeling about being empowered in this way, too, is having a major effect on how the school is doing. Because children given responsibility, children allowed to be part of this decision making process is empowering them, of course, and is also giving them an enormous sense of pride and equipping them with such amazing skills, 21st century learning skills in that. They will go out and they will leave Gesture Mare, they will be ready to take on all sorts of other roles. They will have taken risks. They will have learned how to work as part of high-performing teams. They will have learned how to negotiate and collaborate with senior managers, with parents, uh, with all, all levels of school staff. So um, we're very, very proud of where we are in terms of developing pupils and developing their leadership skills. <coughs> Some of the three because um, we, we need the visual for. In terms of um, pupil voice meetings, that has been a key area for us as well in distributed leadership. So for us, pupil voice meetings are times in the week when members of the school staff sit down with the children, they're invited, they know in advance what the um, area for discussion is going to be at the meeting, and um, so they often come prepared with little notes. And the key point of the meeting, these pupil voice meetings is, how can we make gesture Mary even better? Some of the recent pupil voice meetings um, that we've had included um, getting feedback on uniform field about their school back into what is happening at the school and the children, and this is key, the children seeing that their voice is having impact. So one of the things we found out um, when we probed issues to do with curriculum balance was the children really felt that they would like to have more access to art and design. And one of the outcomes from that was um, we made it possible for the children to engage in art activities as part of the school day during break times, extra clubs after school for art and design. Um, and if you, you come and visit us ever at Gestionera at playtimes, our sensory garden is set up now um, for children to independently go and paint or use chalks or pastels um, independently in their own time if they want to engage in an art activity. It's run by the children, for the children, and that's come from the children. And that's really having an impact because it means that when the children come in for their meetings with the senior management team or the head of the department or the year group leader, 
they know that if they come up with good ideas and ways that things can happen, we, we will together make those things happen. So highly empowering in all sorts of ways. Um, children are getting opportunities, as I say, to make suggestions about how the school works and what will help their learning. Um, so, in terms of making distributed leadership happen at our school and hopefully at your school too, listening to the teachers' voices, crucial, very, very important that people feel that they've got a voice, it's listened to. We mightn't always agree, and that's life, isn't it? We mightn't always agree and we mightn't always be able to go down the path um, that you know, individual people want. But so long as there's a voice and there's a consensus and there's a real feeling that people are being listened to, then you're in a chance of really pushing forward with distributed leadership. <coughs> Similarly, pupils' voices. Pupil voice is a key element. Those our children have so much to give. They've got so much in terms of ideas and solutions that we really would, it would be crazy not to harness that energy from them all the time looking to nurture talent, passion, and expertise within your staff. Really going out to identify where is their great practice? How can I share that practice and cascade that practice through the whole school? So a little bit like... It's all happening, Mr. Stoke. The organisers are afraid with me. It's a problem. It's finished. Is everybody on terra firma? Everyone alright? I thought it was you. My chair was shaking. But then later I realized. Yes. 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 So, we're talking there about it all happening this afternoon. We're talking about nurturing talent, passion, and expertise. And still, I'm passionate about my distributed leadership, even though I'm Developing an energy and a purpose in all around us. Again, that's that staff at every level, that's your non-teaching staff, it's your students, it's your parents, um, your parents' group, getting everybody involved in something. that clear vision, which I mentioned at the start. That clear vision is key, and getting people on board and harnessing energy and talent. Mrs. Parr this morning, referred to as Mrs. Parr and Jackie, Jackie this morning talked about building professional learning communities, and that's what distributed leadership will do for your school. It will empower and it will help towards building a professional learning community, which is what we want. Because with a professional learning community, we will be enhancing student outcomes, student opportunities, and at the same time, we will be building capacity <coughs> so that our school can be sustainable. Long after we're gone, we want fantastic schools to remain and to be built upon. And with you know, getting our younger staff, our less experienced staff on board, giving them opportunities, they're our future leaders. Um, and it's very, very important that through distributed leadership, we allow them to step up um, and step up and take risks. Um, value and facilitating dialogue, very, very important. And lastly, and it would come up on the screen in great big letters, show you here it says let go of the reins and that's a scary one for me and it might be a scary for other people here in the audience if you're heading up a school letting go of the reins and you know in, in terms of, of our own school there must have been so many times where my line managers have had to go let's let's see if Ruth give Ruth a go with this let's see how she gets on with this and maybe gone oh gosh I, I, I would have been more comfortable doing this job myself but no giving it over to somebody else and letting them have a go at it because it empowers, it builds confidence, it builds skills. So I've got to say a huge thank you to line managers along the years for allowing me to develop. And hopefully I am also, you know, showing that sort of same respect, professional respect to other people by allowing them to get on with their jobs and empowering and giving them opportunities. So letting go of the reins. Now, Roosevelt, who was American president 1901, um, said, 
The best leader is the one who has sense enough to pick good men to do what he wants done and the self-restraint to keep from meddling with them while they do it. Tricky for us leaders, especially if we've come through an educational background. Pick good people and let them get on to do it. So just to repeat, is one who has, a good leader is one who has the sense enough to pick good men to do what he wants done and the self-restraint to keep from meddling with them. Much earlier than that, and another great leader named Sue, um, founder of Taoism, it is said that of a, it is said of a good leader that when the work is done, the aim fulfills, people will say, we did this for ourselves. So with those two quotes, it's, it's, they're, they're quite empowering for us as leaders, in that letting go, step back, let people get on with it. People are well able to. Um, because our aim as leaders is to continuously improve our schools so that pupils' experiences and learning opportunities nurture and develop skills and attitudes to equip them as lifelong learners. We're all on this journey through satisfactory to good, to outstanding, to standing out. Why are we on this journey? Because we're all in, in the game of and in the, the business of making schools better. Not to do with the label of the school, but to do with the children who walk through our gates every morning and making sure that every person in the school is on board with making the experiences of those children every morning the very best that they can be. And that concludes my presentation of the Scripture of Leadership. <laughs> I can't stress enough the importance of being familiar with seven strong claims about successful school leadership. Leetwood et al. And um, there's a translation there in Arabic if anybody would like one of those. And a couple of books I would have mentioned, it would have been flashed up there if you had the uh, visuals. One by Spalan, that's Engaging the Many, important, Engaging the Many. And a very good little book on school improvement. I can definitely recommend this one by Alma Harris who's done a lot of work on distributed leadership. Any questions from the floor? Yes? With leadership comes responsibility. Yes. And uh, how is the distributed leadership program aligned with your professional appraisal in the school? Yeah. Well, in terms of identifying what people's key areas of expertise are, that helps in, in terms of developing professional development of other people, of course, and also in terms of developing them as future managers. So there is opportunities for them to share their practice, to train other people, and there's opportunities for them to be developed in terms of going on middle manager courses or you know, shadowing managers within the school and to be brought on in that way. Um, not everybody wants to climb the, you know, the dizzy heights of year group leader, deputy head. Some, some teachers want to just be better and better teachers, don't they? And that's fine as well. So it's making sure that we're identifying good practice. And wherever you are on that continuum of good to outstanding, to standing out, making sure that as a school, we identify who our experts are and move them forward as well. And that can often be through a system of helping other people. That's that metacognitive approach that we very much develop with our children. When you have to unpick what it is that makes you particularly good in a certain area and share that with somebody else, that's very empowering. I don't know if I'm answering your question. So did, did you have to have a, another strand of professional appraisal which took account of the fact that there were people voluntarily giving up their time and, and energy to, to, to spread what their talents were with other people? I don't know if it's formally <coughs> done in that way, but certainly it's very much celebrated, and that would be very much part of our whole school approach, is that celebrating of expertise within the school um, and moving everybody forward. One of, the, one of the systems we have in place is called the Blue Pages, for example, whereby people who feel they're strong in a particular area contribute, and everybody within the school is doing so, contribute to, like the Yellow Pages from those of us from UK or Ireland, whereby areas of expertise are noted and you know if anybody needs to know about tabletop displays they know to go to Mrs. So-and-so in Foundation 2 or etc etc so in that way it, they're informal systems but it, the key for us is experts identified and so what of that is so they can share with other people and through professional development help other people and in doing so reflect on their skills and how they can 
further improve the school and others? I think to go a step further on that one, because yeah. I'm the one who distributes the roof. Mr Stoke, um, our director. We've just set up a thing, uh, an academic council which stretches across all of the just schools. <clears throat> and I'm really excited about it. It's the first time we're truly get together as a leadership level and put our cards on the table and working. Now, chairing that group was something I thought, oh, nice, I'd enjoy that. And I talked to Ruth not about, I use the term distribute it till it hurts. And I've distributed till it hurts. I've handed this group over to Ruth. Now, that has also translated back into Ruth's performance management and professional development. So, yes, it's there, but it's been, and I think Ruth's struggling to actually directly because it's become a professional expectation. It's not something different, it's something new, it's just something that is there now. So we don't unpick it as being separate, it's integral to professional development within the school. Uh, and great for me because Ruth doesn't often realise it's happening. That's the key to distributing the business when you're driving home, you think, I think I've just got another job to do. <laughs> and passion. Um, and also, as part of that interview process, and in every interview for Jess, also mentioned the expectation of Jess is enormous. How do you feel about you know work-life balance and really you know going the extra mile? Um, so right from the off, there is that expectation with staff who join us that you know we're looking for high energy, we're looking for high commitment. Tell us what you're passionate in because you're going to be sharing that. And and we've got people on board who are really interested to learn about your area of expertise. And how nice, uh, you know, how empowering. Um, for a person to be given opportunities to say, well, actually, I'm really passionate about X or Y. For me, SSE, school self-evaluation, and I've got opportunities to, to share and develop and bring other people on in that area. Any, any other questions? Yes? Um, actually, it's also my dissertation topic. Oh, uh, yes. Well, don't it. But maybe a different perspective. Yeah. I'm looking for different modules related to culture, different culture. Uh, what difficulties we face when we distribute, because I know there yeah, are many, many problems, or some, not yes, much. Yeah. But again, with the research, I tell them, I guess, some difficulties we face. Uh, of course. In your experience. Exactly. Right? And in terms of the challenges, which is basically the question, what are the challenges facing us when we're trying to develop a culture of distributed leadership? You know, there would have been a time in our school where there might have been a member of staff, of staff or two, who said, oh no, I just want to teach. I, I'm just a class teacher. You know, thank you very much. I've got my 22 children here and I've got my planning and I'm a very good teacher and I'm going to get on with that. That's a challenge, you know, um, getting buy-in from everybody within the organisation that, no, we need you to do a bit more than that. It might be getting involved with a team. It might be sharing how good you are at display. The key to that, of course, is finding what they are passionate about, getting them on board. Because sometimes people put up barriers, don't they? Because they're nervous or they're afraid or they haven't got the confidence. <coughs> So, on the, time, on the time. So it is important as, for us as managers to find out, oh, I've spotted them doing something that well, I can really celebrate. It might be something small, it might be something enormous, but if it's going to have an impact on some element, at some level of student um, performance and student experience, then we've got to find it and we've got to wave the flag for them and get them on board. It doesn't always work, but, um, but it, I found in most cases it does. We can find something to say, you are brilliant at this. Um, what how we do with our students. Yeah, like we do with our yeah, exactly, just like we do with our students. There's a lot to be said for, for that. Um, find what people are good at and give them that confidence. Uh, any other obstacles in terms of distributed leadership? Time, as you said yourself. Time is, is, is the big one for us as educators. One of the things we've done in terms of um, getting over the, the obstacle of time is we've got our Arabic organised so that all four classes within the year group have Arabic at the same time. So that's four sessions a week within the school day. Year three, for example, are free at the same time. That's been highly empowering. That's gone a long way with our staff in terms of getting buy-in to do more, to contribute more, because um, that you know otherwise you're, you're you're getting on in your classroom, you're doing a bit of marking, and um, you know when you've got non-contact times. Whereas if everybody in your year group, for example, it's just one method we've used, is free at the same time. You can really get after initiatives and, and developments. Any, can any, shall I add a uh, research also saying that the payment is the main issue also for distribution leadership was not paying them the Yeah, some of the research does point to pay payment for extra jobs. There is new research from Alma Harris that shows that actually, um, you know what really motivates us as teachers isn't the pay packet. It is being celebrated, it is being rewarded by being noticed, it's being rewarded by being, being given opportunities. So, you know, there is new research to say that actually it's not all about the pay packet. 
Yes. Should I just one more question? Okay, this is probably the last one. <laughs> um, the, in your school, Jess, yes. it's much more homogenous, almost monocultural, monocultural to a significant extent. Do you extent. think so? We, we're at a school which is much more international. Right. I mean, we're almost hyper international. We've over 80 different. Where are you? Sorry. Dubai International Academy. Okay, yeah. Over 80 different nationalities. Is there any is there any research into distributed leadership? within that kind of hyper-international oh, You've got me there now, and I'll have to look into that. However, at Jeshimera, we've got 48 nationalities attending the school, and we do have uh, quite an array of, of staff from different parts of the world, 20, too. 20 uh, different nationalities. 20 different, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. We used to be very, very British, we're not. <laughs> Irish, <laughs> Irish, we're not, yet. yeah. <laughs> 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 when, when I first arrived, the North Southern Irish teacher, maybe the Irish head would be there, no, no. Anyway, Ruth, I'd like to thank you for a couple of things. One is the stuff in the technical yeah. breakdown. You also made the earth move for all of us. <laughs> <laughs> Never had the opportunity to say that. <laughs> really excellent. So thanks very much, Ruth. Thank, thank you for your attention.